Hi, good afternoon everyone. Thanks for joining us for the Lights on After School Engaging the Media for your event. Today we have two amazing hosts. We have Rob Tataro from the Capital District YMCA and we have Sean Gray from the After School Alliance to help walk us through sort of the 101 of Lights on and also the media engagement piece. So as we get started, just to give you a little bit of uh, context about what we're going to be doing. We're going to start out with just going over who we are, what is uh, After School Works New York State After School Network all about, how we define after school, and then we're going to turn it over to Sean. She's going to go over the basics of the Lights On event, how to register your event, plan your event, and some resources that are available to you through the Alliance. Then we're going to kick it over to Rob from the Y, and he's really going to help you figure out how to get seen by the media and how to get the best coverage for your event. After that, we're going to have some time for question and answers. And just make sure that in the bottom right that you enter all of your questions into the chat box, and you can do that throughout the presentation, and they will be answered at the end of Rob's section. After that, we're going to talk to you just a little bit more about the Fall Training Institute that's coming up, and it'll be a great opportunity for providers, and also just how you can become a member of ASW NYSAN. So just, again, to give you a little bit more background, ASW NYSAN's mission is to strengthen the capacity and commitment of communities, programs, and professionals to increase access to high-quality programs and services beyond the traditional classroom. And how we define after school is really broadly based. It's to include structured activities that take place in school and community-based settings and are offered before school, after school, during summer, and holiday breaks. So as you can see, it's not the traditional definition. Now that you have that background, I'm going to pass it over to Sean. Sean is the Production and Office Manager for After School Alliance. Thanks so much. Uh, it's great to be talking to you all today about Lights On After School. We are gearing up for an awesome event, October 22nd. Um, we hope a lot of you have registered your events. Uh, today is actually the last day to receive your posters. Uh, if you register today, you'll be able to, the, to receive the 10 free posters, to receive them or to get them on time for the Lights On event on October 22nd. Um, so I'll just go into uh, the little presentation I have scheduled here for you. Um, I don't know if many of you know about the After School Alliance um, and what we do for after school programs, but if you're not familiar with us, let me tell you a little bit more about our organization. Uh, we have a simple mission as well, and that's to ensure all children have access to quality uh, before school, after school, and summer learning programs that keep kids safe, inspire them to learn, and help working families. Uh, we work at the level, at the local level, uh, the state level, and federal to educate, empower, and activate advocates uh, and to build support to after school programs. Um, one of our biggest goals is to provide the field with resources and tools in order to become their own advocates for after school. And Lights on After School is a big part of that mission. Uh, so, what exactly is Lights on After School? Lights on after school is a chance for after school programs to celebrate and showcase exactly what they do every day uh, and make the case to the community, to parents, to policymakers, and to the media that after school programs are essential and for students and for their families. Uh, it's also an important um, way to highlight uh, the changing face of what after school really looks like for kids. It's not just daycare. Um, you are providing engaging and hands-on enrichment opportunities for kids that uh, enhance and build upon school learning time uh, in really unique ways. Um, some people may already be aware of what you do, uh, but others may not. And that's why hosting a Lights On After School event is a great way uh, and opportunity, uh, is a great opportunity to educate uh, your community and create uh, brand new advocates. Uh, Lights On After School allows you to bring attention to the need for more after school programs and resources in your community. Uh, it also gives you the freedom to create an event that does this in a way that works best for you uh, in the area of your program. Uh, there's a lot of partners of Lights On After School, from 21st Century Community Learning Centers to 4-H After School, Boys and Girls Clubs, YMCAs. Uh, they all register and participate. Uh, Lights On is a great, um, or Lights On events generate thousands of newspaper, radio, and TV stories across the country every year, um, including every major media market and targeted congressional district.
So what's the point of hosting a Lights On? Um, it is to build long-term support for your after-school program and for similar programs in your community and in your state. So how can Lights On help sustain and promote your program? Uh, this is where relationships with the media and with policymakers come in. So Lights On is more than just a one-day thing. Through the course of planning your Lights On event, you'll str uh, strengthen relationships with partners and build new relationships. So we'll be taking a little more, I'm sorry, we'll be talking a little bit more about the planning progress uh, to make sure that your event is planned with the intention, uh, with a clear intention of what goals you want uh, to come out, to come out of your event. Uh, Lights On after school um, does not need to be difficult uh, to plan an expensive, uh, or you don't have to plan an expensive uh, event in order to, to make it effective. Um, so there are three easy steps to creating a Lights On after school event. They're very easy. The first one is to register your event. Uh, if you visit afterschoolalliance.org, uh, click on the Lights On Registration button. Um, we love to hear uh, information about what's going on in your event. Um, what we do is calculate um, registered events throughout the state and let the state know exactly how many uh, programs have registered from the state. And we also um, provide you with weekly planning tips. Um, as well as weekly prizes. So once you register, um, we email you uh, all of these great resources for gearing up for the weeks to come up for Lights On. So um, eight weeks out, six weeks out, five weeks out, you know, day of um, and afterwards. We'll email you so that you know exactly what to do uh, within the course of the event. Uh, when you do register, you also receive the 10 free posters to help promote the event locally. And like I mentioned earlier, today is the last day to register and receive those 10 free posters in time for your Lights On event if it's being held October 22nd. If it's afterwards, we can definitely ship out um, uh, posters for you to receive them before your event. Uh, you are entered in raffles and prizes every week. Uh, and your, your event will be added to the website for media and for community to see. Uh, and your event is counted in our national total. Uh, register with us. Registering with us is the only way that we'll, we know that you're holding an event. Uh, so the only way that you'll be able to receive your free posters is to register, and that's why it's so important. Step two is planning your event. Visit our website to find uh, our event planning kit that includes step-by-step -step information on how to start planning a successful Lights On after school event. Our event planning kit includes sample materials like invitations and activities that the kids or participants of the Lights On event can, can do, <laughs> graphs and logos to download, timelines and checklists, which are actually the most used resources we have, uh, event ideas and case studies, media materials that you can edit to make it specific to your after school program, handouts and talking points to help share the after school story with your community, and most importantly, we have an entire section on engaging the media and policymakers. Uh, so now that you have access to the tools and resources you need, it's time to think about your goals for hosting a Lights On after school event. Uh, who are you trying to reach uh, with your message, and who is best to deliver that message? Do you want uh, the results like, what do you want the result of your event to be? Um, is it specifically for media coverage? Do you want to partner with um, uh, uh, local organizations in your community? Um, a better relationship with the mayor or police chief? So also think about your needs. What can you feasibly do with the resources and the time that you have? Will you need to find sponsors or donors? Uh, are these partners in your community uh, that you can team up with? Um, such as other local after-school programs or businesses or government agencies. We also have tools to help answer questions before you start planning, such as how can you showcase students? 
One way is to make sure that they are involved in the planning and execution of the event from wherever possible, like from start to finish, whether that be through demonstrations, giving speeches, being tour guides, or planning out activities or making decorations. Involve partners however you can. Enlist board members to introduce students, ask donors to attend to do, um, to see what you're up to, um, or uh, our, our event planning guide um, has tools and case studies to help you all along the way. Um, make sure that you come up with roles for local leaders who want to be a part of your event. Uh, we have sample invitations and letters to policymakers that you can customize. It's good to write out an invitation list. So speaking of invitations, think about who's the best to deliver your message and how they should do that. Um, should you be presenting an award to a particular after school champion to highlight all the work they've been done in your community? That's a question that you would have to ask um, beforehand about what your goals are um, in hosting a Lights On event. Whatever your goal is, keep the audience in mind when showcasing your accomplishments. Inviting the, pro, uh, the parents and the students is, give, is a given, but inviting other parties, such as local business leaders and community leaders, may be a way to open the door to new, long-lasting relationships. Always be sure to invite your local elected officials. Uh, so when and where should you host your event? The answer to this question depends on your goals. Uh, if you want a more a day in the life of a lights on um, event, um, so you, then you would host your event during the regular uh, school hours. For more parental involvement, um, it's best to host your event after work hours. Um, if, you're, if the media is important, um, earlier in the day it tends to work better for reporter deadlines. Oh, that slide got a little messed up there. Um, but it says keys to success. <laughs> Here are some key points to keep in mind for successful lights on after school celebration. Make sure to broadcast your event and use it as a as use it to build support in your community. Uh, remember, all you have to do is register, and we'll send you ten free posters to help promote your uh, event to the community. So you can post those posters throughout the community to let them know that you're hosting something um, at your program. Use social media. Facebook and Twitter can be very effective ways of getting the attention of elected officials, policymakers, and the media. So it's great to like tweet at them. So like at Senator who such and such would you love to come to our um, Lights On after school celebration with a link to either your um, website or like a link to the invitation. It's a great idea. Um, and know that you're not alone. It's always a great idea to leverage the relationships you already have to make this uh, um, uh, to make this um, the best out of this opportunity. So now, what should you do during your celebration? Um, this may seem a little daunting, but like I said, lights on after school events don't need to be hard to plan. Uh, I'll give you a quick um, a uh, few celebration ideas that don't take a lot of money or resources in each of them, uh, and each of these um, ideas can help you engage uh, policymakers in different ways. So uh, we do have light bulb art uh, that can be printed and decorated by the participants in the program, and you can have students write on the light bulbs why they love after school uh, programs so much and why it's important to them. And then afterwards, you can mail those to your elected officials along with a cover letter about your program, what you would love to see from your um, elected official and how they've been supportive. Um, and we have a lot of uh, materials that you can uh, grab from our planning guide to make that process a little easier. Uh, the after school petition, which is located on our website and a downloadable form, is also a great way to engage parents, staff, and community members to let them know um, uh, or to uh, let elected officials know that the voters in the community support after school for all. Um, so print them out and have people sign them, um, and then you can send them to our offices. Uh, and we can make sure that the elected official know uh, elected um, official knows. Uh, how important after school is in New York. Um, open houses and site tours can be fun, easy ways to showcase all of these great things uh, you do every day. Um, invite local leaders and policymakers to join uh, parents on a student-led tour. 
this gives them the opportunity to hear from those uh, participants um, who are directly affected by the work of the program and how great they're doing, and they can be your best advocates. Uh, after school programs this year have registered to host family game nights, arts and talent shows, carnivals and festivals, and more. There are lots and lots and lots of ideas and options out there for you to choose from. Okay. Uh, ways to engage policymakers. Policymakers at every level of government are critical allies in expanding the resources available to after school programs. Here are some ways that we can involve elected officials and candidates from your office uh, in your event. Uh, we do have a sample event invitation on our website, as well as sample proclamation so that they can declare lights on after school day in your community. Policymakers may also be great messengers to help deliver your talking points to a broader audience and to add some real muscle to your outreach efforts. Your event provides them with a great opportunity to position themselves as an ally to an, an important issue that lots of voting parents care about. Having policymakers tour your site or, even, or, or event also gives the press more reason to cover the event, so make sure that there are plenty of great visuals for photos. You can also invite candidates uh, for office during the election season, so that's coming up pretty soon. Just be sure to give all the candidates equal opportunities to participate, so as not to come across as endorsing one candidate over the other. Um, after school is one of one of after school is one of those issues that supports uh, that finds supports across party lines. I'm sorry, I'm just I have this vision of like someone inviting Donald Trump to their to their lights on event. It's just funny. So even if there is an elected official or candidate who hasn't supported after school program in the past, uh, Lights On is a perfect opportunity to educate them on the importance of investigating in after school, investing in after school. Uh, what, on our website, we have a guide to help you navigate uh, election season. Uh, it includes rules of engagements for nonprofits so that you're clear on how, on the law, on talking points, and on advice on, on how to target your key audience. Um, it includes media and the field of after school supporters. It also includes questions to ask candidates about the stance on after school investments um, and tools to help you plan a candidate forum. Lights on After School provides a wonderful opportunity to generate positive news coverage for after school programs and to remind the public of the need to provide sufficient funding for after school. Reporters seek out stories that affect the community. They will want to tell readers, uh, viewers, and listeners about the threats of after school programs. So plan your after school, so plan your lights on after school uh, with the media in mind. If you're trying to involve the media, make sure you have uh, com compelling visuals, like including a, a banner or a backdrop or photos um, and speakers and performers. Uh, keep in mind timing. Daily print and uh, broadcast reporters need to file their stories by early afternoon. Hold the main points, parts of your event, like speeches and performances, as early as possible in the celebration. For example, if your event goes from 3 to 5, um, you should hold the speakers and the performances at, at some, around like 3.15 so the reporters can stick around and, and get that information. Uh, you can also make a media list, including local reporters, editors, columnists, bloggers, and producers who can cover, uh, who cover education, families, and um, children, or workplace and community feature stories. Uh, in election years, uh, you should also add local po uh, politi politics reporters, sorry, especially if you're inviting candidates. Uh, it can also be a great idea to invite the public. Send out an announcement to the media a few weeks before uh, your event. Give them the calendar announcements that we have um, samples of on our website, uh, and they can publish that in their newspapers uh, to encourage the public to attend your event. Make sure that your key message uh, are all integrated in your media materials and uh, are all focused on uh, remarks that you find important. Uh, try to keep it to no more than three main points. Uh, be sure to tailor your reflect or tailor yours to reflect what after school programs mean to your community and the unique challenges facing after school programs in your state. Feel free to steal ours because after school programs keep kids safe, inspire learning, and help working families. 
or after school programs need more resources and more support. Uh, it can also be uh, important to make sure that your event has press appeal. Send media alerts to entice reporters to cover your event. Highlight what will happen at the event and why it's important to the community. We have everything you need um, on our website. You can also issue a news release. Send out the news release a few days before your event with quotes and even event highlights. This will help reporters to cover your story even if they can't actually come to the event. Consider giving press kits to each reporter who comes to the event. Press kits can include things like newsletters, background information on your program, fact sheets on after school in your area, copies of speakers' remarks, letters from kids and families about the experience in the programs, copies of any official proclamations, details on upcoming events that your program is having, and other interesting information. And don't stop the day of. This is the most important thing. Don't waste this media opportunity. Keep copies of any stories that aired or, or published uh, or were published in order to show them to potential funders, board members, and or future events. Stay in contact with the reporters who came to the event and pitch follow-up stories when you can, like an end of the year follow-up in May or June. And after all the hard work has been done and you're able to wipe the sweat off your brow, it's time to celebrate all of your accomplishments with award ceremonies, contests, open houses, and family dinners with the rest of the after school program, youth, staff, and guests on October 22nd. Uh, once again, our website has a wide variety of free tools to help you through your pro uh, planning process. The sooner you register, the sooner you'll start receiving weekly planning updates from us. Um, that pretty much covers it for my portion of this presentation. We'll be providing some time for Q&A at the end of the webinar, but if you have any questions beforehand, um, I guess hold on to them and then um, it's, we'll, we'll let you know when that, when that time is ready. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. We really appreciate that. And if you'll just stick around so when Rob is finished, we you Q&A time. And don't forget, everyone, to put your questions uh, down in the chat box so we can get those answered for you. And now I'm going to introduce Rob Tataro. He is the Communications Director for the Capital District YMCA. And he has just done a fantastic job over the years, uh, really helping increase media and social media coverage for the Capital District YMCA. So I will now turn it over to Rob. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, I'm glad to be here with all of you. Uh, Sean did a great job of covering the whole event. And, uh, and really touched on a lot of the media things. We're going to dig in a little bit here. And, um, you know, one of the things that always strikes me is, um, you know, we all know the media loves to cover negative stories, but really we have such great stories that are uh, in all of our facilities and in all of our programs every day. So for me, being here with you today is about helping all of us get seen by the media. Um, and what I want to start with is when we're talking about what will be our media strategy, we got to talk about starting with the story. All right. So in all of our in all of our programs and our lights on after school events, um, what's the story that we want to get out to parents, to media, to uh, our politicians? Do we have someone in our facility in our program that? Um, can share that story about what after school really means to them. Is it a parent uh, talking? Is it a kid talking about the accomplishments they've made? Because every day you're doing amazing, amazing work in the schools. Now, there's some good news and bad news about all of this. And when you're dealing with the media, you need to know that they are getting hundreds of requests every day to come cover events. And if you look at the Lights on After School map, there's probably dozens, if not hundreds of organizations in your area running events. The map is dense with Lights on After School events. So when we're talking about this, we, we got to remember when we're trying to reach out to reporters that the average attention span is eight seconds, which doesn't seem like a very long amount of time. And especially when I tell you that the average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. So, 
The good news is if your reporter happens to be a goldfish, you have a little extra time. However, I haven't found too many of those in my career. So what we need to do is create cool visuals and engage our audience faster. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first we need to know the media. And what do we need to know about the media? We need to know that they're busy. Like I said, they're getting hundreds of requests every single day. And everyone who requests it thinks their story is the most important. Um, couple things to think about with the media. They, they really care about their audience because without their audience, they don't have jobs. So how does your story fit into their needs? How do you make them a hero every day uh, by being a source for them, by giving them amazing visuals? If you're, um, if you're talking to a, a news station or, or a television station even that skews slightly older in their, in their population. Maybe they have a very high senior population. Well, are they real interested in the issues of after school or is there an angle in there that you can pitch a reporter specifically around after school? Maybe you bring in uh, senior volunteers. Um, so it's all about those angles. There's stories that you can do with almost every single um, media outlet, but it's about finding the right outlet and, and really pairing it up. So another example is if you are bringing in a local sports team or a college to uh, some of your Lights On After School events uh, and partnering with them to run some activities, that's a great thing to reach out to the sports reporters for. A group that maybe you wouldn't reach out to normally because it's not necessarily education, but it's a different angle to play. Uh, and a lot of dealing with the media is about finding the angle that's going to be best for them. The really good news in all of this is that your stories are about kids and they're relevant to the community. Every day, you're solving a problem. Every day, you have statistics to back up the amazing work you're doing, the impact that you're making. And you're living your mission to change lives every day. And that's really powerful. And because, and I keep driving every day in, because every day you have an opportunity to talk about this. Lights on after school, as Sean said, doesn't need to be a culmination. It can be a beginning. It can be a continuance. We want to talk about these every single day. So as things come up throughout the year, sort of the, the strategies that I'm going to give you here are also in effect throughout the whole year. And really, the more you're able to build a relationship with the media, the more valuable you become to them, um, and the more likely they are, as Kelly had said, to look at you, and one of the things that we've done well is to have them look at us as an expert in the field of, of what we do. Now, I, as a spokesperson, I'm, I'm never the expert on anything, so I always have to get myself to good people, and that's, the, that's one of the good things that we need to remember is making sure that the people that we have uh, are the right people. And that's one of the things to keep in mind before we even go out and pitch the story. Now, you've done all the work to, to get your event together. You know your kids in your program. You know the families in your program. Now, do you know the goals of why you even want the media there? That's one of the biggest things. What are we trying to get out of this? Are we trying to get more coverage? Are we trying to invite politicians saying, hey, we have commitments for media to be there? Or are we using politicians' commitments to say, to media outlets, hey, we have Senator so-and-so coming, and, uh, you know, she'd really love to, uh, you know, show her support for child care. You know, senators and congressmen, they bring television cameras with them. So it's always great to have those people. And now, once we know our goals of why we want to get media there, we need to identify contact people. And I, and I don't mean at the uh, media outlet. That'll come a little bit later. What I'm referring to here is identifying contact people on our side. So if you have multiple sites that maybe you manage, uh, maybe every site isn't a site that you want to uh, send media to. Maybe you want to pick one. Maybe you offer an option or two um, where you're going to try to drive in your press releases media to go to those sites. Some sites, you know, to be blunt, are better sites than others for in terms of visuals, in terms of the, the size of the group of kids that you have. 
Uh, you know, those are all things that I'm considering when I'm going to pitch the media. Is it going to be a good visual for them? The contact people then that we put in place are people who need to be able to talk about what we do every day, to talk about it being safe and inspiring learning, uh, to talk about all those things that you do inherently uh, that are almost reflexive now. But we need to talk to those people who can do it on camera and can do it concisely, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. And then the last point here is that we need to know what our expected outcomes are. Your contact people need to know what your expected outcomes are. When I go to pitch, is it okay if I just get them to commit to running a photo that we take and send to them later? Is that all right? If it's promoting the event, I need to be out way ahead of it so that we can get promotion for the event, right? So all of these things need to be in your mind when you're starting your, you know, before the pitch, when you're working up to talking to the media. And like Sean said, there are amazing resources on their website. So, uh, so please make sure you go out there and check out what's going on because it's really, really great. Now, as I'm getting ready to, to talk and go out to reporters, pitch my stories, I'm always trying to think like a reporter because the key word in news is new. Is this something new? Do I have a new angle? Am I doing something really cool? Am I tying STEM into this? What are, what are all my angles? What on, if it's going to go in the paper, what's the headline look like tomorrow morning? What are they going to say about this? Can I write that for the reporter? I can't tell you how many times I've written post-event releases and they've made it into newspapers and online and not a single word has changed because I made it really easy for a reporter to take it and make it seem like it was their own, make it seem like it came from that news outlet, when in all actuality it came from us. Um, we are our biggest proponents. We got to know our material the best. Um, we got to be able to share why it matters. Uh, that's really important, especially when pitching the media. Let's talk about why does this matter? You're getting hundreds of stories pitched to you every day. Why does this one matter most? Another thing to consider as I'm thinking like a reporter, is it easy to cover? Are you going to make me hike up a mountain for this? Are you going to uh, make me go through uh, incredible amounts of security checkpoints, things like that? How, how hard is this going to be able to, to cover? And then, uh, obviously, Sean talked about it a little bit, but the timing of the event. Now, once you start to build relationships and things, you can actually move your event around a little bit. And there's some really cool opportunities if you have some local news stations to run an event at 5, 5.30 and get on the news and do live shots and things like that. That's a whole different level of stress for the person running your communications and, and, your, uh, and your contact people. But, uh, but it's a lot of fun to, to go live at a live event around kids. Um, and we've done a lot of those, and it's amazing. Remember, we talked about it, Sean's talked about it, I continue to talk about it. The visuals are so important. What are the visuals going to look like? Can we provide those on our own? Do we have a photographer coming to the event? Can we shoot video? Can we create some of these things that we'll also be able to use on social media, on our website, in different places? Is it worth it to do post-event releases, to do photo releases? Uh, you know, when I say photo releases, that means I came out and I, and I shot an event for ourselves, and after the event I do a quick little write-up with a caption and I send it out to the papers and the media and see where we can get a place. Uh, again, there's going to be a lot of competition for stories, so how we pitch our story, what we say about it is obviously going to be really important. Um, and photo releases give us an opportunity to get coverage even when uh, maybe no one showed up. You know, and as I talk about photos uh, and, and some of that DIY, do-it-yourself visibility, um, there are publications online where you can write your own news. Um, you know, if you have social media presence, this is the event that you want to throw out as many photos as you can. Uh, photos are really engaging. You want to make sure as you're leading up to it, if it's open to the community, let's post these online. If you have a blog, blog about it on your website. Make sure you have a Lights On After School page on your site. And again, that post-event follow-up. 
make sure we get video or photos, anything that we've created, let's get that back out to the media and see if we can continue to, to get coverage for this. So we have some of the ideas behind it, some of the tools in our toolbox right now, and now we want to improve our media relations skills. First thing you need to do is build a list of targeted media. If you've ever picked up the newspaper or watched the news and watched the story and thought, oh, that could be a story about us, or why isn't that a story about us? Take that reporter's name down. If you can figure out who the education reporters are, who the people who are really passionate about young people are, um, those are the names that you want to that you want to get. You want to pull those off websites from the media. You want to build a targeted list of media of people who you know are passionate about you. Then you also want to build a list of, you know, any of the assignment desks. Uh, they're all pretty generic emails that you can send your press releases and things to. But when you can get in the hands of a reporter or an editor, that's really who you want to be with. You also want to know how that reporter wants to be contacted. You know, I, I've worked with some reporters who are always on their cell phone and they just want you to call them when there's a quick news story and they'll head right over. And then I know other people who only want to be contacted by the media and they're never going to tell me they're showing up. And as I'm thinking about my story and how I can do things better, I know I need to deliver a concise pitch. I know I may only have 30 seconds with this reporter to get them excited about my story. So how am I going to tell them the issue, the intervention, the resolution, all in 30 seconds of an amazing story that's wrapped around this event. You know, just general good rules too. Don't send unsolicited attachments. You know, they don't, they're, they're weary. We're all weary of, of email viruses and things like that. If, if they don't know you and don't know to expect something, how, why, what's going to make them open it? Again, the media knows their audience and you need to know your audience in the media. So find out what stories they're interested in. I've had some great opportunities to be on national TV shows and, uh, and in those, uh, sort of the best piece of it is the communication with the producers uh, before the show and finding out what other stories they're interested, which helps me pitch my, change my pitches to them. Remember, only make promises you can keep. If you want to promise an exclusive, make sure you can keep an exclusive. If it's, a, if it's an event that everyone, you're offering it up to everyone, then make sure they know it's open to everyone. Make sure you're following up after you're sending your releases. Uh, make sure you're making phone calls if they want to be reached by phone. Uh, just a lot of real simple things. You know, as we start to wind up here, uh, there are some, some big media mistakes that we can make. I've made this one in my career so many times, putting people on camera, um, you know, assuming someone's a natural, all right? And basically what that means is because you've done something, you can get up and speak publicly, uh, because you've shot a video with someone before, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're the person that's the best spokesperson for you. Uh, they may not know the information as well as somebody else. Uh, when you're in front of the media, it's a completely different atmosphere than when you control everything. So remember, this is completely out of your control. So are you able to, uh, to articulate yourself and the mission of the programs um, in a concise manner, kind of under, under fire when, the, when you're sweating it? Uh, you know, and, and the nice thing about Lifetime After School is these are all positive stories, but still there's a lot of anxiety around being on camera. When a reporter walks in with a big camera or the notebook taking notes for a news article, uh, you know, it's, it's stressful. You know, another mistake to avoid, long answers. All right, if you watch the news, the sound bites are short. Make sure you're speaking in short sound bites. You know, if, if you can think about it, like Twitter, you only have 140 characters. Make sure you're using the most of your words to get your mission across, because at the end of the day, you may talk for four or five minutes, and it could be a 30-second piece. And maybe of that, you're only on air for 10 seconds. So make each second where you talk count. And again, if you don't know your audience, you don't know who you're really talking to out there, you, you need to know that in order to be on point. Again, another mistake, and, and again, I, I've made all of these in my career, uh, trying to be funny when you're not. 
If you're not funny, just, just put it out there like you are. If you can get jokes in and have fun, I always like to create a, uh, a really relaxed atmosphere with the media. I also do a lot more crisis communication stuff than I do uh, uh, really pitching uh, the, the stories that are really positive anymore, um, when I'm on camera at least. So, uh, so when you see me, it's almost never funny anymore because it's usually serious. Um, and then the last piece is the lack of awareness of a camera. If you're on camera, make sure you know where the camera is, know where you should be looking, uh, where the reporter wants you to look, and things like that. All right, so I definitely want to start to wrap it up now. Um, so I just want to hit a few last points, and then hopefully we have some questions and things. But remember, what's in it for the reporter? You know, in sales, we talk about making the customer the hero. Well, in this case, when you're pitching a reporter, you're trying to get them to buy your story. You're trying to get them to give you free coverage for your program. Uh, whether it's a story about a kid, about an event, about a family who you're, whose lives you're changing. Uh, remember, it, it is a game of sales. Remember to be compelling, be polite. Uh, they want to help people they like. That's that's again that's that's a sales. You you want to you want to be around people that you like, that you respect, that you know are experts in what you're doing. You want to build a relationship to become an expert with these reporters. Um, the more you can show your expertise and the expertise of your organization and the people who work in your in your programs, the more likely they are to seek you out. Uh, at the Y, we've had a great opportunity to become experts and are the go-to people on a lot of things in our community. And that's all because of the way that we treat and build each relationship with our reporters. And the last thing is be prepared. I know you live this every day. I know you know the stats. I know you know the impact. Uh, but sometimes when the lights come on, uh, you can draw a blank. So make sure you're prepared. You know your facts. You know, <coughs> excuse me. You know everything you want to talk about. Uh, the more prepared you can be, the better your presentation will be both on camera and before uh, when you're making the initial pitch. And sort of the last thing that I love to say is don't forget the so what. So why, so what? It's a real simple question. What does it mean? So what does this mean to the reporter? What does this mean to their news station? How does this help everyone else? So what? What's the importance of lights on after school events in, in each of our communities. And because, you know, there's so many amazing resources, we can all answer that question really easily. So I've made it to the end now, too. Um, if you guys have any questions, there's my contact information. You can reach me on Twitter. You can reach me all over the place. Um, feel free to, to reach out, and, uh, and I'll get, send it back over to Kelly if there's any questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rob, uh, both you and Sean. Just some really incredibly helpful information. So we do have a couple of questions. Uh, so, Rob, I'm going to start with a question for you. What social media techniques have you seen applied for various lights on events? So in what ways could they use Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, to help promote their uh, lights on events? Right. So depending on how your uh, how your uh, you know, program is structured. If you have your own page, you know, who are you talking to and really who are you trying to reach? When we're talking about social media, in general for programs that I've seen, it's mostly internal audiences. And I think there's a great deal of excellent communication that can take place internally to, uh, to help show parents even why the program is important. Now, I just have a little guy. He's only 14 months old, so he's not talking yet. But from what I hear from my friends who have older kids is a lot of times they ask what happened at school today or what happened after school and they get grunts and groans and uh, nothing and uh, you know, everything's good uh, and not really the, the notes, those deep connections. And we know that your staffs are all making these really deep connections with kids. So social media to me and this Lights On After School event gives us a chance to reset and say, hey parents, this is what we're doing. Um, you know, I think Sean mentioned, 
using social media to reach out to news and politicians, if those are your goals to get to them, that's a great way. Talk to them directly. Um, that would be one of my, you know, a couple little suggestions on, on how to use social media. But really, I, you know, I'd love to turn my computer on on October 22nd and see a million photos coming through, uh, through Twitter and LinkedIn about, or in uh, Facebook about uh, these events. Great. Thank you so much, Rob. Uh, Sean, I have a question for you. Um, the question posed was, what unique ideas have you seen at various Lights On events over the years? Anything that really just stands out to you? Um, we've seen a lot of cool things happening. I mean, something as small but powerful as like a spaghetti dinner so that the parents can know exactly what's going on in their kids' after-school programs to something as big as like an advocacy day held on the state capitol uh, in New York. Um, they've invited thousands of their um, program participants uh, from different uh, after-school programs across the state, gather them all on Capitol Hill, or not Capitol Hill, but the, their state um, their state capitol, uh, like the steps of the state capitol, and just like had signs and music and rallied about how important like these programs can 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 be um, effective to their participants. So, we and I I love them all from from the small ones to the large ones. I think as long as you're getting your 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 need out there and like your your um, support for after school, then it'll it, it'll just grow and blossom from there. Great, thank you so much. Um, there's one more, sort of a two-part question uh, for you, Rob, and Sean, you might be able to also help answer this. The first part is, how far ahead should you reach out to the media? And the second part is, what are some ways you've been able to get elected officials to events? Sure, so, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different theories, but I think more communication with, um, with media as much as possible. Uh, I know that there's a timeline on the website of uh, when you should start reaching out to media. I like to be about two weeks out with my first notice so that they know what's going on, and then uh, and then usually a day or two before making my follow-up calls, making any final pitches, uh, trying to get some commitments of of what uh, of if I can get media to uh, any of the events that we have, and then for. Um, for the uh, for the politicians, you know, I think one of the things that we need to remember is we we may not always get some get the the senator or whoever, but we may get be able to get someone from their office. So those are really personal asks, uh, you know, following up, calling their district office, making sure you can get uh, anyone from their office to come once, and then making sure because their their assistance and things like that hold a lot of influence over policy. So make sure if we can get anyone from the office, we get anyone. And that's really with that personal call and uh, relationship. Yes, and we have um, in our planning guide a lot of uh, samples on how to customize a letter to your policymakers to include like uh, great things about the program to try and get them uh, to to at least send uh, a staffer over. All right, wonderful. Thank you both so much. I don't see any other questions here. So I do think that that is all of them. And again, we really just appreciate your time and all of the fun help that you both put into this. So thank you so much. So as just a, a follow-up to that, uh, we just wanted to mention that the ASW Nice Dance Fall Training Institute is coming up. It'll be held at the Doubletree Hotel in Rochester. Some of the workshops will be on youth development, social emotional learning, managing behaviors, project-based learning, and successful staff engagement. It will be November 14th, which is a Saturday, so that way more providers are able to attend. We also wanted to uh, make note that new this year, we're having two STEM-focused tracks, specifically for after-school and expanded learning programs, and we do know that STEM is really a hot topic for our after-school and after-school providers, so we just want to make sure that everyone's aware that those two tracks are going on. There will be a lot of hands-on staff engagement and really address how after-school professionals can perform can support STEM engagement in those programs. So we do have some great presenters that are gonna be at the Training Institute. Mike uh, does a lot with making sure that you really leave his training 
with something that you can implement right away into your program. So his training is, is certainly a wonderful one to attend, and we've heard a lot of great feedback about the managing challenging behaviors and really making sure that uh, your providers are, are fully understanding of how to be supportive in providing inclusive environments for your children. So if you have any questions about the Fall Training Institute, please make sure you go to our website, which is www.nysan.org. Uh, you can also go to the ASW website as well, which is afterschoolworksnewyork.org. And uh, just last, you know, making sure that everyone is a, a member of ASW NYSAN, you get a $20 discount to our annual conference, you get our members only newsletter that has a lot of great funding opportunities and updates from around the state. You'll also have access to upcoming trainings and conferences and webinars like this one, but there'll also be a lot more webinars that only the members are able to view. So any other uh, questions or anything? I do see uh, a couple questions here. Um, someone uh, is on the website, Sean, and really looking to see how they can find the free posters. So Sean, do you know how they can find the free posters? Uh, are you looking to download a copy, or if you register, you'll receive them automatically um, ten, from ten posters each? Uh, so it depends on what you want. If there's a download that you want, um, if you just navigate to plan your event um, and downloadable graphics and images, if you open that little tab there, there's the lights on poster, um, and you can download that image to your and put it on your website or in your um, invitations. If you wanted a hard copy, feel free to shoot me over an email, sgray at afterschoolalliance.org, and gray is with an A, and I can put some in the mail for you today. Great, and also, Sean, um, if I heard you correctly, so someone else had a question that they're on the website, they can't find the link to register. So if you register for your event, you will automatically receive the posters, is that correct? Correct, yep, as soon as we get in your information, we'll send that information over to the printer and they'll put some 10 posters, a packet in the mail for you and you'll, you'll receive it. Wonderful, so you're not registering for the posters, you're registering your event, your lights on event, and then you'll receive the posters automatically. Wonderful. Well, Sean, Rob, and all of our attendees, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it and hope you have a wonderful Lights On event. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Rob.